Vatican, an iconic symbol of faith and history, remains shrouded in secrecy, intrigue, and countless tales of the unknown. While its grandeur and spiritual significance are evident, there lie beneath its surface stories that might unsettle the most intrepid explorer. Delve deeper into one such tale where forbidden texts from the Vatican's secret archives beckon with mysteries of old. Number 1. The Secret Archives' Forbidden Texts The Vatican Apostolic Archive, more popularly known as the Vatican's Secret Archives, has long been a treasure trove of historical documents, manuscripts, and written correspondence from past popes. Its vast collection has been a subject of fascination and speculation for historians and enthusiasts. Nestled within these kilometers of shelving are the forbidden texts, documents deemed too controversial or sensitive for public consumption. Rumors have long whispered of heretical texts that have found their way into the archive. Some suggest these documents offer a very different perspective on the known narratives of Christianity. There are tales of Gnostic Gospels, which present alternative accounts of Christ's teachings. These Gospels, like that of Mary Magdalene or the Gospel of Judas, challenge traditional Christian beliefs, suggesting a more mystical approach to faith or alternative views on Judas Iscariot's betrayal. Conspiracies also circulate regarding documents that expose the darker aspects of the Church's history. Allegedly, there are texts that shed light on the Church's role during the Crusades, the Inquisition, or its relationship with more contentious figures in history like the infamous Borgia family or the enigmatic Templar Knights. Unveiling these documents might force a reassessment of well-accepted historical narratives. Then there are forbidden magical texts, ancient scrolls and grimoires that speak of arcane rituals, alchemy, and summoning practices. Legends suggest that these texts were acquired from various parts of the world during the Church's expansive reach in the past millennia. By keeping them hidden, the Church ensures these powerful and potentially dangerous rituals remain out of the hands of those who might misuse them. What's also compelling about the forbidden texts is the encryption and coding believed to be employed in some of these documents. Historical accounts hint at the use of unique ciphers and symbolic languages to conceal the true messages of these texts. Cryptographers and linguists have long yearned for an opportunity to decipher these elusive codes, hoping to reveal secrets that could reshape our understanding of the Church and history itself. Number 2. The Mysterious Tomb of Pope Alexander VII One of the most intriguing monuments in the heart of the Vatican is the Tomb of Pope Alexander VII, a masterpiece crafted by the renowned artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini. While the intricate sculptures and symbolic elements of the tomb draw the attention of many, the whispers about its mysteries are what truly captivate those who delve deeper. Pope Alexander VII, born Fabio Chigi, was one of the most influential pontiffs of the 17th century. His papacy saw the culmination of the Baroque era, a period defined by grandeur and opulence. Yet hidden beneath this facade of splendor are tales and speculations that make this tomb a focal point of Vatican mysteries. The tomb itself, located in St. Peter's Basilica, features a grand skeletal figure of death carved from Sicilian jasper, emerging from below with an hourglass in hand. This startling representation is not typical for papal tombs and immediately suggests a deeper meaning. Some argue it symbolizes Pope Alexander's preoccupation with the transience of life, while others believe it might be a hint towards the clandestine events of his papacy. Legend suggests that the tomb might house more than just the remains of the Pope. Whispered tales speak of ancient relics hidden within the monument, some even going so far as to suggest that the legendary Chalice of Valencia believed by many to be the Holy Grail, is secretly tucked away inside. While these tales are largely unfounded, they persist in the annals of Vatican mysteries. Another fascinating element is the story surrounding Alexander's sudden death. Historical records state that he died after a brief illness, but rumors and folk tales suggest otherwise. Some believe he was poisoned, a victim of political intrigue and the tumultuous politics of the time. The skeletal death on his tomb, holding the sands of time running out, might be a cryptic nod to this sudden and unexpected demise. Number 3. The Bone Fragments of Peter St. Peter, the foremost apostle of Christ, is a towering figure in Christian theology. His significance to the Roman Catholic Church is undeniable, 
often regarded as the first pope and the rock upon which Christ declared his church would be built. But beneath St. Peter's Basilica, deep within the Vatican grottos, lies a mystery that has perplexed theologians, historians, and archaeologists for centuries. The bone fragments believed to belong to the very apostle himself. The story of these relics began in the mid-20th century when excavations beneath the basilica, initiated by Pope Pius XIII, revealed a complex of ancient tombs and mausoleums. These structures, predating the basilica itself, provided a tantalizing glimpse into early Christian history. Amidst these relics of the past was an unassuming shrine bearing the Greek inscription Petros Eni, translated as Peter is here. This discovery set off a flurry of speculation and investigation. Could these bones genuinely belong to St. Peter? Were they interred right beneath the altar where millions of believers had come to worship? The initial examinations were promising. The bones belonged to a robust man in his 60s or 70s, fitting the presumed age of Peter at the time of his martyrdom. They also dated back to the first century AD, aligning with the apostles' lifetime. These tantalizing pieces of evidence seemed to provide a partial affirmation, but doubts remained. One of the significant controversies surrounding the bone fragments is their fragmented state. They were not found as a complete skeleton, but rather as scattered fragments, leading skeptics to question their authenticity. Some argue that if these were indeed the relics of so revered a figure, they would have been preserved with greater care. Further fueling the mystery is the manner of St. Peter's death. Tradition holds that Peter was crucified upside down, a final act of humility, deeming himself unworthy to die in the same manner as Christ. But the fragments provide no conclusive evidence of such a fate, leaving the door open to myriad interpretations. Number 4. The Ghost of the Borghese Gallery The Borghese Gallery, with its stunning collection of artworks from masters like Caravaggio, Raphael, and Bernini, is one of Rome's crowning jewels. Yet, amidst the splendid paintings and statues, lies a spectral tale that adds a haunting dimension to the gallery's historical allure. This tale speaks of a phantom whose presence has been whispered about for centuries, the ghost of the Borghese Gallery. This ethereal apparition is believed to be none other than Princess Pauline Bonaparte, the favorite sister of Napoleon Bonaparte. She was the wife of Camillo Borghese and is immortalized in marble by Antonio Canova in the gallery. This magnificent statue, Pauline Bonaparte as Venus Victrix, portrays her reclining gracefully, embodying both her alluring beauty and her audacious spirit. Visitors to the gallery have reported eerie occurrences around this very statue. Some speak of a sudden drop in temperature, while others claim to have felt an invisible hand lightly brush against them. There have been numerous accounts of visitors catching a fleeting glimpse of a figure resembling Pauline, drifting silently amidst the artworks, her gaze melancholic and distant. Local lore adds depth to this haunting. It's said that Pauline, in her lifetime, had an insatiable desire for beauty and eternal youth. Her statue, a tribute to her eternal beauty, is believed to anchor her spirit to the gallery. Her apparition, some claim, roams the halls in a never-ending quest for admiration, much like she sought in her earthly life. Adding to the spectral atmosphere is the faint aroma of roses that many have reported smelling near the statue, especially during late hours. Pauline was known for her fondness for rose perfumes, and this scented clue further cements the belief in her lingering presence. A haunting episode that bolstered the legend took place in the early 1900s. A night guard, during his routine rounds, reportedly heard soft whispers emanating from the room housing Canova's masterpiece. Curious, he approached, only to witness the statue of Pauline slowly turning its head towards him. Overwhelmed with terror, the guard fled and refused to return to the gallery after dark. This incident, passed down through generations, has added a chilling chapter to the ghostly lore. Number 5. Nostradamus Lost Predictions Nostradamus, the 16th-century French seer, has left an indelible mark on history with his mysterious quatrains, prophecies that have been scrutinized, interpreted, and debated for centuries. While many of his predictions are well documented, there is a persistent legend that suggests a collection of his prophecies is concealed within the secretive walls of the Vatican. The story starts in the late 1500s, 
shortly after the death of Nostradamus. Rumors began circulating that not all of his writings had been made public. A manuscript, differing from his published collections, was said to have been dispatched to Rome. This document, believed to contain some of his most explosive and detailed predictions, was allegedly deemed too controversial and destabilizing by church authorities of the time. This lost manuscript, as legends suggest, contains predictions that directly reference pivotal events in church history, including the schisms, controversies, and even potential scandals that would unfold over the subsequent centuries. The prophecies are believed to be more explicit than the typically cryptic quatrains Nostradamus is known for, making them more accessible and, therefore, potentially more dangerous in the wrong hands. While the Vatican has never confirmed the possession of such a manuscript, several curious events have added fuel to the speculative fire. In the 19th century, a scholar claimed to have come across references to this secretive document in the diary of a cardinal from the 1600s. The diary detailed the cardinal's discomfort and unease upon reading the forbidden quatrains of the seer. Another tantalizing clue comes from a defector of the church in the early 20th century. In hushed circles, he whispered of a forbidden library within the Vatican, a place where heretical texts and controversial documents were kept away from prying eyes. Among these, he claimed, was the lost manuscript of Nostradamus, heavily annotated and studied by a select few. Many believers in the prophecy argue that the very nature of Nostradamus's work, the ability to foresee future events, would naturally be of immense interest to the Church. Keeping such predictions under lock and key would ensure control over potentially destabilizing information and prevent potential misinterpretations or misuse. Number 6. The Demon Fresco in the Pauline Chapel The Vatican is home to some of the world's most treasured artworks, Frescoes, sculptures, and paintings by the great masters adorn its walls and ceilings, telling tales of devotion, miracles, and divine interventions. However, among these widely celebrated masterpieces, there is one lesser-known and enigmatic artwork that has given birth to dark rumors and speculations, the supposed demon fresco in the Pauline Chapel. The Pauline Chapel, adjacent to the Sistine Chapel, is a place of spiritual importance and aesthetic wonder. Commissioned by Pope Paul III in the 16th century, its walls showcase the work of the esteemed artist Michelangelo. But if whispered legends are to be believed, hidden amidst the holy depictions is an image of a demon, inconspicuously woven into the details. The elusive demonic figure is said to be found in the fresco depicting the conversion of Saul. Here, amidst the chaos of Saul's dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus, Keen-eyed observers have claimed to discern the faint outline of a horned, shadowy figure lurking in the peripheries. This figure, lacking the serenity and divinity of the other characters, stands in stark contrast to the scene's overall theme. Theories about the presence of this demon are abundant. Some believe Michelangelo, in a daring act of rebellion, secretly introduced the figure as a commentary on the corruption and decadence he perceived within the church at the time. Others surmise it might be a representation of the personal demons the artist wrestled with throughout his life, a subtle signature of his internal struggles. Yet another theory proposes that this alleged demon is an intentional inclusion, symbolizing the ever-present lure of evil, even in moments of profound spiritual revelation. It serves as a reminder that the path to righteousness is fraught with temptations and challenges. Number 7 the sarcophagus of the Zodiac. Deep within the Vatican's labyrinthine catacombs, where time seems to stand still and history whispers from every corner, lies a relic that has puzzled historians and theologians for generations, the enigmatic sarcophagus of the Zodiac. This ancient burial artifact, adorned with zodiacal symbols and celestial motifs, stands in stark contrast to the predominantly Christian iconography that characterizes the Vatican's treasure troves. The sarcophagus, made of richly veined marble, is a study in paradoxes. At first glance, it appears to be of pagan origin, with the twelve zodiac signs intricately carved around its perimeter. These depictions are interwoven with scenes of planetary gods, hinting at Greco-Roman mythological influences. However, nestled amidst these pagan symbols are unmistakably Christian motifs, a fish, a shepherd, and the chai-ro symbol, 
representing Christ. The blend of pagan and Christian iconography has led to a myriad of theories regarding its origin and purpose. Some historians believe that the sarcophagus belonged to a high-ranking Roman official who converted to Christianity. The zodiac symbols, they argue, represent the individual's life before conversion, while the Christian motifs signify their newfound faith. In this interpretation, the sarcophagus becomes a symbolic testament to the transformative power of faith. Another theory suggests that the sarcophagus was designed during a period of syncretism, when early Christians sought to integrate their beliefs with existing pagan traditions to facilitate conversion. The zodiac symbols, in this context, might have been used to represent the cyclical nature of life and death, harmonizing with Christian beliefs in resurrection and eternal life. Over the centuries, the sarcophagus of the zodiac has attracted the attention of occultists, astrologers, and esoteric scholars. For them, it represents a hidden link, a key to unlocking ancient wisdom that bridges the gap between different spiritual paths. Number 8. The Whispering Gallery of St. Peter's Basilica St. Peter's Basilica stands as an emblem of grandeur and piety. However, echoing within its grand walls is a lesser-known enigma, the Whispering Gallery. This architectural quirk, situated in the upper alcoves, allows whispered conversations to travel across vast distances, clear as if spoken directly into one's ear. Legend has it that the gallery was once used by Vatican insiders to eavesdrop on unsuspecting visitors or even fellow clergymen, gathering intelligence and secrets. Others believe it served as a clandestine means of communication during times of political unrest or intrigue. Visitors today, intrigued by the tales, often experiment, whispering secrets and messages, marveling at the uncanny clarity with which they're heard across the expanse. The Whispering Gallery, though a mere architectural oddity, speaks volumes of the mysteries and histories encased within the Basilica's walls. Number 9. The Hidden Relics of the Passion Beyond the Vatican's showcased relics, whispers persist of a secret collection, the Hidden Relics of the Passion. These are said to be items directly connected to Christ's crucifixion, preserved away from public view due to their immense sanctity. Among these rumored relics is the Titulus Crucis, the very sign placed above Christ, declaring Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. While a fragment is displayed at the Church of Santa Croce in Rome, some believe the complete relic is secretly housed within the Vatican. Also whispered about is the Sponge of Gaul, used to offer vinegar to Christ during his final moments. Given the profound sanctity and emotional weight of these relics, it's speculated that the Church, in its wisdom, has chosen to shield them, fearing potential misuse or veneration bordering on idolatry. Such relics, if they indeed reside hidden, form a tangible link to Christianity's most pivotal moments, making them among the Vatican's most spiritually profound and enigmatic treasures. Number 10. The Curse of Pope Joan The legend of Pope Joan, a woman who supposedly reigned as Pope while masquerading as a man, has endured for centuries. While considered by many historians as mere myth, the tale has woven itself into the fabric of Vatican folklore. As the story goes, Joan, a highly educated woman, concealed her gender and rose through the church's ranks, eventually becoming the Pope in the 9th century. Her true identity was allegedly revealed only when she gave birth during a procession, leading to her immediate dethronement and, according to some versions, a brutal execution. The curse associated with Pope Joan pertains to the belief that her spirit lingers within the Vatican's walls, casting a shadow of doubt and mistrust. Some claim that certain papal processions were altered to avoid the spot where Joan's truth was unveiled while others believe a ritual exists to ensure that newly elected popes are indeed male, a direct response to the Pope Joan legend. Whether a tale of intrigue, an allegory on the suppression of women in clerical roles, or a genuine historical occurrence, the curse of Pope Joan remains a dark and cautionary tale echoing through the Vatican's storied corridors. Number 11. The Unknown Prisoner Beneath the Vatican Beneath the splendor of the Vatican lies a vast network of tunnels, crypts, and chambers, many of which are restricted to the public. One persistent tale speaks of an unknown prisoner said to be held captive within these underground confines. Whispers among some Vatican insiders allude to an ancient cell, its walls etched with inscriptions that no one can decipher. 
Inside this cell, according to the legend, lies a prisoner whose identity has been lost to time. Some speculate that it could be a heretic, imprisoned for challenging the church's doctrines, while others believe it might be someone who stumbled upon the Vatican's deepest secrets. The presence of chains and old remnants of confinement gear in certain restricted sections of the Vatican's underground lends some weight to these tales. Additionally, night guards have occasionally reported hearing faint cries and whispers emanating from beneath the ground, fueling further speculation. While the tale of the unknown prisoner is unverified, the very thought of someone trapped beneath the world's religious epicenter, their story untold and identity forgotten, adds another layer to the enigma that is the Vatican. Number 12. The Mummified Remains in Santa Maria della Concezione Amidst the Vatican's surrounding landmarks, Santa Maria della Concezione stands as a macabre testament to the intersection of faith and mortality. Within its crypt, known as the Capuchin Crypt, visitors encounter a chilling spectacle, chambers adorned with the bones and mummified remains of thousands of Capuchin friars. Rather than a place of dark intent, this crypt serves as a profound meditation on life, death, and the transient nature of earthly existence. The bones are arranged in intricate patterns, creating designs and even chandeliers. One inscription in the crypt reads, What you are now, we once were. What we are now, you shall be. However, among the many remains, a particular mummified body has become the subject of hushed talks. Clad in tattered robes, this figure is said to be that of a friar who was entombed alive by mistake. On certain nights, it is whispered that soft groans can be heard emanating from his direction, a chilling remnant of his tragic fate. Whether one views the crypt as a place of reverence or eerie fascination, the mummified remains in Santa Maria della Concezione serve as a tangible link to the Vatican's long-standing dance with mortality, faith, and the hereafter. Number 13. The Haunting Lament of the Vatican Grottoes Beneath the grand expanse of St. Peter's Basilica lie the Vatican Grottoes, a series of chapels and tombs housing the remains of various popes and martyrs. These grottoes, while revered, are also shrouded in tales of the supernatural. Visitors and clerics alike have often reported an otherworldly lament that seems to echo through the marbled corridors at dusk. This mournful melody, devoid of any discernible source, has been likened to a chant, sung in an ancient tongue long lost to time. Some believe that this haunting lament is the collective voice of souls interred within the grottoes, offering prayers for the world above. Others speculate that it might be the voice of St. Peter himself, echoing his eternal vigil over the church he helped found. While numerous investigations have been undertaken to ascertain the source of this ethereal lament, no concrete explanations have emerged. The haunting refrain remains one of the Vatican's most evocative mysteries, a spectral reminder of the thin veil separating the living from the departed. Number 14. The Forbidden Gnostic Texts Within the fortified vaults of the Vatican, beyond the well-trodden pathways and public chambers, lies a repository of ancient documents, scrolls, and tomes, treasures of knowledge that the Church has accumulated over two millennia. Among these, the forbidden Gnostic texts stand as some of the most controversial and enigmatic acquisitions. Gnosticism, a diverse religious movement that gained traction in the early centuries of Christianity, emphasized esoteric knowledge, or Gnosis, as the path to salvation. The Gnostics believed in a direct, personal experience of the divine, often bypassing the formal structures and hierarchies of the established church. This put them at odds with Orthodox Christianity, leading to their persecution and the condemnation of their teachings as heretical. The forbidden Gnostic texts are a collection of scriptures, writings, and treatises that offer a glimpse into the spiritual world of the Gnostics. These documents paint a picture of a Christianity vastly different from the Orthodox narrative. They speak of a God beyond the Creator Deity of the Old Testament, elaborate on the role of Sophia, wisdom, in the cosmic scheme, and portray Christ not just as a Savior, but also as a revealer of hidden knowledge. Perhaps the most well-known among these is the Gospel of Thomas, a collection of sayings attributed to Jesus, Unlike the canonical Gospels, which weave narratives around Jesus' life, 
The Gospel of Thomas is a cryptic compilation of his teachings. Some of its passages mirror those in the canonical Gospels, while others introduce entirely novel concepts. For instance, it suggests that the kingdom of God is not a future promise, but an existing reality, only perceived by those who truly understand. Number 15. The Secret Pagan Altar Beneath St. Peter S. Beneath the grandeur and sanctity of St. Peter's Basilica, the heart of the Vatican, lies a secret that whispers of an ancient past, a hidden pagan altar that serves as a reminder of the complex historical layers interwoven within the Church's foundation. Rumors and whispers of this concealed altar have persisted for centuries. According to the lore, beneath the hallowed floor of the basilica in the subterranean depths lies a forgotten space. In this hidden chamber, remnants of an ancient Roman temple stand, complete with an altar dedicated to pagan deities. The history of the Vatican is intertwined with the ancient city of Rome, and it is no secret that the early church incorporated elements from pre-existing Roman religious practices. However, the existence of a secret pagan altar within the very heart of Christianity raises intriguing questions about the church's syncretic past. According to the legends, this concealed altar represents a vestige of the early Christian period when pagan rituals and beliefs coexisted alongside emerging Christian practices. It is believed that during the process of Christianization, the Church sought to incorporate and assimilate certain pagan traditions, transforming them into Christian symbols and practices. This hidden altar serves as a poignant reminder of the Church's deliberate efforts to assimilate and repurpose elements from earlier religious practices. It represents a period when the Church consciously borrowed from pagan traditions, using familiar symbols and rituals to facilitate the conversion of the Roman populace. The existence of the secret pagan altar has led to debates among scholars and theologians, some argue that it represents the Church's pragmatic approach to religious assimilation, while others view it as evidence of a more syncretic and inclusive form of Christianity in its early stages.